this is just a general chat about samurai swords and shit. So, you'll have noticed recently I've uh, been doing some Yagyu Shinkai Ryu with Marcus Payne. And we're going to be doing more of this. And what we, the intention is to fully explore the Yagyu scroll, which is known as the Imokuroku, the Yagyu scroll that was passed down in the Matsudaira line. Well, it's actually the handwriting is by a Matsudaira, a man. And it's passed down in various lines. And that scroll is what we're going to try and bring back to life and bring to you guys and hopefully in the end do a decent full length video on it and maybe even do some online courses stuff like that so let me go through that but if you want to help me and support me please get yourself a copy of the book of bushido that would really help and get your mindset about the samurai stuff so to answer some questions or to go through some thoughts so people have said a few things here um, they say, oh, it's not like this, and Yagyu's not that, and you're not an instructed teacher, and all this sort of stuff. Yes, I agree. But let me start with, um, I was none of that for ninjutsu. I was none of that. I was not part of a ninja descendant lineage. I was not given any special instructions outside of the Bujinkan, you know, something that was real historical ninja. And nobody can deny, we absolutely have changed the shape of ninja and ninjutsu for all the world. Of course, there's lots of things wrong with the ninja and out there now that we haven't changed, but that that doesn't change the fact that we have seriously changed the research of the ninja and anybody who really looks into it is now like, oh, okay, that's different. There's still lots of channels out there doing the wrong thing, but there's now the option for the real thing to be done. And I'm gonna do the same in soldiership. So before you start going, oh, you know, and you're not doing this, you're not qualified, they're the exact same things that were said about ninjutsu. Nobody, called, nobody claims that now. Nobody says like, oh, I doesn't know about ninjutsu and this and that. So I want you to remember that. And we're going to be doing sword. Now, a lot of people have said, oh, Anthony, you look like you're a HEMA practitioner. I have had a go at HEMA. Yes, I have. But I have not, I'm not a regular member of HEMA. I'm not anything like that. I am actually trained in the Bujinkan. And funnily enough, a few people said, oh, you should have kept training because I don't think you move like... I was trained by Dennis Bartram of the Bujinkan who absolutely was trained by Hatsumi. And the point was, is Hatsumi says, throw off all the static stuff. And, and it's more, it's much more, you get a much more dynamic fluid motion when you actually do movements with sword and ship. And when you try to move, it isn't, Hatsumi was saying, it's not this. Ah, Hatsumi sensei is like, this is not how the samurai moved. You look at Kono sensei, he's not, he says, they're not how the samurai moved. Kuroda sensei is like, mm. you see Kuroda sensei, he's like this. Next, boom, he's in and then moved. Kono sensei is exactly the same with Bionya. And Hatsumi sensei, if it had just stayed in that, that, that same path he was going, instead of going off to some crazy stuff, he was doing exactly the same. It's not that. And the reason it looks like HEMA is not because it's HEMA, is because HEMA have done something that nobody else in the martial arts world have done from a historical perspective, is take scrolls with no lineage and bring them to the fighting thing, where now there are some really top class HEMA fighters around the world, which fight in the style of German longsword, Italian longsword, English longsword, and all of these type of things. Um, and they've done it from scrolls and interpretation and hard academic and physical rigorous um, investigation. And that's what we're gonna do with Yagi Ryu. Now people say, oh, but Yagi Ryu exists, but this is the problem. So they say, go, and I've had this, this, this weird, um, people have said this weird thing to me for years, and I think it's the craziest logic I've ever come across. I think it, it borders on the sort of insane stupidness. It's like I say, guys, I've watched Koryu, and it just doesn't feel like it would be really work in real life. It's all your damn, yo, 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 yo. And it's like, that, that doesn't quite feel. So I'm gonna go back to the original sources, use my understanding from body movement from the Bujinkan and how to get rid of um, all the, or to, how to hide the, the rigorous structure of things into a movement, yeah? I'm gonna get rid of all that. And they say, oh, you should train, train with Koryu because that'll give you the correct way. And I'm like, that makes no logical sense whatsoever. So my point is, I watch Koryu, I can see the moves there, but it looks like there's been A, change, or B, dogma added to it. And there's a lot of backstory for understanding Japanese swordsmanship. And I don't think it really computes with what would happen in the 1600s. So this is how, I, no, 1500s. Somebody would fight in the 1500s, wham, done, doom, it cut off, you know, like, bang, that, that's how it would work. And then late 400, 500 years later, people are doing this. Hmm. Hmm. 
you know, huh, you know, they, you know what I mean? It's like this type of stuff. <sighs> you know, you're like, no, that's you can see it's there. <clears throat> From this, the wheel cut, bang, the wheel cut, dang, to mm, mm, yeah. It's not that difficult to understand that and all them four or five hundred years, people have gone from the quick cut to, right, you need to step out, you need to move your leg, you need to come over, you need to cut down, and let's teach a big class, and let's teach all, you know, or let's teach it in schools, or let's teach it this, or let's do this to multiple people, or, you know, bit by bit over the years, it has changed. So the aspect is there. Somebody's going to attack you, you're going to cut their hands by wheeling your sword over in the cart that it's already open. Bang! Cut their hands off. Okay, right. It's not that illogical to think that it's been dogmatised over the years. Not at all. So, excuse me, when people say to me, oh, you should go and learn Koryu, that makes no sense because I'm saying it doesn't look right from an observable point of view. An artist, yeah, I can generally draw, but on the whole, I can tell you a professional artist, if they've got something wrong, the angle's wrong, that doesn't work, or the light's not right. Why? Because I'm human. And I'm a human, I can say, oh, okay, that doesn't look right. And you don't have to be a professional swordsman. I don't have to be a professional painter. I don't have to be a professional tennis player to look at those things and say, Some, that's not right. And it's not right because it wouldn't work. But why is it not right? That's the question. Why is it not right? So the idea of me going to learn 20 years of Koryu to come to the same conclusion as anybody and say, that wouldn't work in a fight. But yet it looks like it should do. But what's missing? And the missing thing is what the Hema guys have done and the Bujin kind of done. And that is strip down the dogma and go back to fluid movement. If you ever want to do fluid movement or you want to know about that, you see Dennis Bartram and he's got um, a way, he's got a YouTube channel out there now. He's got a couple, but I think one's gone defunct. He's the man who deals with fluid movement in martial arts and in medicine. He's the man to see. He's Bujin Khan. He's better than more. He's absolutely superb. So... The, what we, I have done the same for Ninja and I'm going to do the same for Swordsmanship. And we're going to start with Yagyu Shinkagi Ryu. Now I've picked a deadline so that nobody can argue with it. And it is perfect actually. We've picked the Imokuroku, which is available for everyone in multiple translations. I have a swordsman, a, a fully qualified Koryu swordsman who speaks Japanese who's fluently who has a Japanese wife, who is, does business with Japanese people, and he writes business emails all the time, and he's a swordsman, and he's qualified, and he's doing the translation. And I have a group of people who are also Iaido qualified and Kendo qualified, and other people who are actually going through those things, and we're rebuilding it and rebuilding it and rebuilding it, and we're about up to Kata 14. We're quite, it takes a long time, and they are not polished either. And eventually, what's going to happen is I'm going to fly to a dojo. I've booked a booking a dojo in with a good background. We're going to fly us all over there, it's in Europe somewhere, and we're going to do it all. And we're going to, because they've got the best background, we're going to film it all and we're going to get it out to you. But what I'm releasing at the minute is all the bits and the information that's coming up and the bits. Of, so it's not just out of the blue for you. So those people who are saying, you know, oh, Anthony can't do this. I did it with the ninja and I'm not putting Hema into it. I'm putting the Bujinkan movement into it because the entire and partly watching what Hema did with scrolls. But what I'm saying is samurai in the 1500s actually had to fight full on fight and you see a lot of people saying oh you must move off the center line you must do that's not how fighting works fighting doesn't go and we move off the center line everybody moves off the center line sometimes you're head to head you're crushed in you're knuckles in you're smashing and you're crying and and i've seen like i've got documents where it shows you how to hold your hand because you're too tired musashi himself is like pin them go in push in not move off the center line it's like get in there crush them and one of the five fundamentals of miyamoto musashi is simply this Go faster and harder than they are. They're coming at you. Bang. Straight through. Just bang. Get rid of their stuff out of the way. So you get people saying, oh, you've not moved off the centre line. You're like, a warrior probably doesn't. I'm not saying they don't 100% of the time. They will get off the centre line and move. But there's a moment where you just smash through. And you take them out. Or they take you out and you go through. So a lot of people are misunderstanding a few key elements here. One is that I have a proven track record with doing it with a ninja. And we're going to do it with the swordsman. And two is that there's, there's the warrior element, which is not the science element. You get a lot of... So martial arts turns into science in the end. You get the diagram, especially in Europe, you get the diagrams, you get the foot thingies. But when you read 
especially Miyamoto Masashi. Miyamoto Masashi is clearly the best. As much as people go in and out of liking Miyamoto Masashi, he is like, get in there, kill him, and do it fast. Don't mess about, don't be leaping, don't be jumping, don't be doing anything like this. Just walk normally and kill him. And get in there. Sometimes you move off the centre line, sometimes you cross blades, sometimes you hold blades, sometimes you just body slam and bang. There's Mubioshi Ryu, grip them and bite out their wrists. You're in a body, you know, just biting out the wrist, head butting. It's proper fighting. If you get videos of street gangs fighting and cage fighting and you know, like knife fighting in the streets, it's closer to Japanese swordsmanship than Japanese kata and swordsmanship. That's the thing. But what's the magical bit about Koryu is it holds some of those secrets within it. And the last thing I'm going to say is the reason I've picked the Matsudaira line there is because it is from, I think, 1701, 1707. Sorry, I've not, I've, my notes are in there. But the point is, is it is the closest we have to the original Yagyu member who got it from Kami Izumi. So Kami Izumi is the man who did um, Kage Ryu, and then they, you know, Shin, sorry, Shin Kage Ryu, and then you've got Yagyu Shin Kage Ryu, and that's, that you've got a 100 year gap between them, and that is the closest. Anyone today in a real live lineage is a four to 500 year gap, yeah? It's, it's in that basically 400 years plus gap. And depending on where you want to stop going back, you want to go 1550 or you got the 1400s on this um, Kagiru and Shin Kagiru and Yagyu Kagiru. The closest we've got to Yagyu himself is the Matsudaira line, the Matsudaira um, handwriting. That's it. And then after that, it gets further and further and further away. And we know 100 years is a lot, so there's definitely differences. There might even be differences between the images and the captions that go with it. They, they, there's There's problems. But the problems from that scroll are less than the problems that exist today. And I have just gone and bought um, a, a, a book, a fully illustrated book on Yagyu Shinkagiru from the main line. I think it's the main line. And they openly say, this is the old way. This is the more modern way of doing it. It's changed. Every Japanese swordsman I talk to ever in Japan, at events, anything, they say, oh, of course, Japanese swordsmanship have changed. One of my favorite ones is Tami Aru, who said, yeah, if my sensei from the past, the grandmaster, the founder came today and and looked at my art, he'd say, that is not Tamiru. He said, it's not Tamiru, but it's changed so much. But he says, this is what we've you know, got, and we passed that one because they're Japanese. So what, what the answer, the question you've got, everyone has got in their mind is, what did samurai really fight like back in the day? And you, you, when you, even people who call you go there. And the question is, is we have to find the closest one. And so far, the Matsudaira line is the closest we get to a description of each of the kata um, then that, that we can get even more than the Heiho Cadencio, which is the Book of Family Secrets. And that gives you inklings, but it doesn't describe them, you know, structure by structure, but it does give you more. So if you mix in the Heiho Cadencio and the Imokuroku, you get close to what the Yagi were doing. So that's what we're doing. And we're going to, and it'd be better, guys, if you support me. Most do. I've just done a poll today about whether you're enjoying the way the swordsmanship's going. And it's got about a 90 to 10% ratio. 90% are like, yeah. 10% are like, no, I don't really like it. And the minute it's at 6%, but I assume it's going to go up like that. So that's where we're up to, guys, with the swordsmanship. So, um,. We're going to do it, so it doesn't matter. Nothing's going to stop us doing it. It doesn't matter if it's 100% disliked. I'm going to still do it, you know, because it's a worthwhile cause. Remember, when I did the ninja stuff, it was 100% of people were against me. And 100% of people were like, you're wrong, Anthony, you're wrong. Those people who said they were with me from the very beginning were very quiet. But they got very vocal later on. So I was alone for a long time of it, of saying I had to stand up to a lot of people. And you know what? I was right. And it was right. And everybody's happy with it now. We all understand there's, we got to the new level of ninjutsu. We're going deeper in that way. So the soldiership is going to be right. We've got about 10%, maybe 20% of people are going to say it's wrong. So it's better than the ninja times. But we've got to get rid of that idea of, you know, let's fight against Anthony. Let's do it together. Let's do it together. Let's go out there. Let's get it done. And let's do it. And then, um, and even from within inside my own group, people are like, no, it's not how we do it. For example, Hasso no Kamai is given a different way than Hasso no Kamai. But we've got... In no Kurai, and then there's modern, modern Hasso no Kurai, but there's different Hasso no Kurais and different ones, and we have to match them all up. And what I'm doing is telling people, take that thing in your head, throw it away, you don't, you don't get rid of it, but throw it to the side, start at the beginning, go through it, look for any gaps, fill it in with what knowledge we can. But don't fill it in with knowledge 
that you think supersedes the original because the original is the original, yeah? Let's go back as close as we can to the original. Right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Get yourself a copy of Book of Bushido. It really does help me. See you soon.